This afternoon, I watched a video on flighttest.com that was uh, presented by a young fellow that uh, was making a flight test torch, but he was making it out of core plastic. Um, let's say plastic materials, fluted plastic material. They made sign boards out of. Uh, there's a local signboard piece that I'm using. Now, the core plast comes in various thicknesses and evidently in various uh, strength because this one here moves fairly easily. By, uh, the hinge in here is, is uh, made you know, by removing one of the flutes. All right. I like the tool that the young gentleman had to remove the entire section of the flute at one swipe. I do use a um, uh, carpet knife the same as he does, but I use just a single blade. And it kind of gets out of track a few times there. But I made this one. This is a, uh, use would be a combat airplane. Uh, the only difference between this and some of the others that you see is um, it uh, has a third fin in the center. Now, I do find that it flies better with the third fin in the center. I begin to wonder maybe I could make these a little smaller. In fact, this one here will be have smaller fins on the outside and, and a major fin in the center here. Uh, it's more deliberate. goes, you know, it doesn't wishy-washy on me while I, as I'm flying. I like that better. This flies very well, but I do have a solid hinge here with just the relief on the bottom, and it works out all right. This is a uh, about eight inches. These motors about eight inches from the um, front, and I have a arrow shaft. I believe that's so. Oh, I guess that must be about 12 inches back, and of course the um, the slot for the motor. Everything it's pretty much same as you see in a lot of a lot of different pizza box airplanes. Okay, the only problem I'm having now is is that I went to build another one that I was going to give away and after I cut the cut out the back for the uh, hinge I found that this is still pretty stiff now if you have too much pressure here in order to make it uh, operate um, you're going to cause your servo to draw too much current and the next thing you know, it causes draws the current down in the uh, the voltage down in the receiver. If the voltage goes down in the receiver far enough, it'll brown out. It'll shut off, and it'll take a certain amount of time for it to relink. Now, years gone by, I've had the same trouble with the old strikers. When you hop up a striker and you had a lot of pressure on it, it would cause a brownout. And what I found out then is that if there was any binding on the uh, elevons at all, uh, you could get a brown out and it usually ended up in a crash unless you were smart enough. Some some people would turn their transmitter off and turn it back on again and get it to relink. I never was able to do that. But uh, I never really had a total crash, but I come close and I have had brown outs before. So that's just something to know that um, you can have a brown out if your hinges are too stiff. Now, in order to try to relieve some of the pressure on the hinges, I just use part of the hinge here and honestly it's still not a, I still got too much pressure on it you hear that boy it it you know takes a little little bit of current there to push one down pull the other one up or pull them both up that's gonna that's, that could cause me a brownout so I'm probably gonna make these hinges here a little smaller and try that I could probably cut the pressure down maybe by half if I made them um, um, half as big. I wish I'd made four across here instead of just three but I'm too far along to, to uh, change that and we'll see how it works out. But I'd appreciate it if somebody would, um, since I've been banned from flight tests I can no longer make comments. Um, I'd appreciate it if somebody might get online and uh, uh, go on flight test and put a suggestion in in the comments section for that FT storch out of Coroplast, I'd appreciate it. And I'd appreciate it if you make any comments you choose on my video. Thank you very much.